Hi boys and girls. This week we will be exploring space. We'll be looking at the sun, the moon, the stars, and the eight planets that orbit around our sun. Our planetary system was formed 4.6 billion years ago. And if you look at the picture that is in your second clip, you will see nine planets in this slide. For most of history, it was thought that everything in space moved around the sun. However, around the 17th century, the idea that the Earth is just one of the planets in the system started gaining popularity. In fact, the sun is only one of more than 200 billion stars moving about in the Milky Way. Pretty cool. Our solar system consists of eight planets which all orbit around our home star, the Sun. These eight planets are, and they are located on your slide, Mercury, Venus, Earth, our planet, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun and Neptune is the furthest planet from the Sun. Jupiter is the largest planet of the solar system. So our next slide is of Mercury, beautiful planet. All those blues and gold colors. All of the pictures that are included today have all been taken by NASA. So this planet, as we've said, is the closest planet to the sun, and it is about as wide as the Atlantic Ocean. 18 Mercuries would fit into the Earth, our Earth. The planet does not have an atmosphere, just like it is on the other planets. There is no water present on this dangerous planet either. Their temperatures vary drastically between 290 Fahrenheit to 142 Fahrenheit. So a very drastic change in temperature. This is also the fastest planet. It speeds through space with 50 kilometers per second, which is about 31 miles per second. The Bepi Colombo mission was launched in October 2018 and now travels in space toward Mercury which will reach by 2025, that's five years from this year. It will orbit the planet to solve mysteries about Mercury. It will also hopefully reveal questions like how planetary systems form. So this red planet is called Venus. Venus's name is after the Roman goddess of beauty. It also is known as the evening or morning star. Yellow clouds made of sulfur and sulfuric acid cover the entire planet, causing light to reflect off the surface. This makes Venus the second brightest object in the night sky after the moon. Venus is very similar to Earth in terms of size and material. However, it is the hottest planet in the solar system with temperatures reaching 460 Celsius to 480 Fahrenheit. The surface of Venus hosts thousands of volcanoes, craters, and super high mountain ranges. Many missions have been conducted about Venus, but many questions remain. The Soviet Union successfully landed eight space probes on Venus during the 1970s and 1980s. If the International Space Station is in the sky, it will be brighter and easier to see than Venus. The space station looks like a very bright star all on its own. So here we have Earth, our planet. Earth is the fifth largest planet of our solar system and has one large natural satellite, the moon. 
Did you know that all planets were named after Roman and Greek gods and goddesses, except that of Earth? The name Earth, nevertheless, is more than 1,000 years old, and it means just ground. Everything one ever knows is here. This is the only place where life is known to currently exist. Most of the Earth's surface is about 70% covered with water, leaving only 30% of land. Prior to science and before our exploration to the moon, many people thought that the Earth was flat. And it wasn't until we made that exploration up to the moon that it was confirmed once and for all that the world, that our planet was in fact round. So in this little fun slide, I have a comparison of Earth and Mars. Mars is much smaller than that of Earth. And on the right-hand side is a actual picture of Mars taken by NASA. Uh, it's a very dry red planet. Uh, it's most likely the candidate for future human habitat. It, if affected by huge dust storms that occurs every now and then, and it covers the entire planet. Mars is very cold and dry, but water does exist in forms of ice at the North and South Poles. The surface of Mars has many craters, deep valleys, and volcanoes. The largest peak on the red planet is a volcano called Olympus Mons, which is three times higher than Mount Everest. Everest is our highest mountain on Earth. So you can imagine how incredibly tall that is on Earth. Mars. Mons is the Latin word for mountain. Mars has two moons called Phobos and Deimos. Both are probably asteroids which were caught up by Mars' gravitational field. There are two rovers on the surface of Mars and six spacecraft orbiting Mars that are tasked with discovering the presence of water and searching for evidence of previous ancient life amongst other things. This next planet is Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. The most famous feature on the surface of the planet is the Great Red Spot, which you can actually locate right there, close to the middle on the right-hand side. This Great Red Spot is actually a storm that has been blowing for about 350 years, if not longer. Jupiter has some of the largest moons in the solar system, and one in particular, Europa, might be the, able to sustain life in an ocean below its icy surface. There is one spacecraft currently orbiting Jupiter called Juno. Juno is trying to solve how the planet formed and finding out more about the winds that occur. So this beautiful picture is Saturn. Saturn is a gas giant just like Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus. This means that it doesn't really have a proper solid surface as it is mainly made up of gases with a small rocky core. Saturn is the second largest planet and is known for its rings. Although the other gas giants also have these kinds of rings, only Saturn's rings can be seen the clearest. Saturn's moon, Titan, is the second largest in the solar system. In 2005, NASA and the European Space Agency landed a space probe on another second moon of Saturn, which could potentially be habitable. This next picture is of Uranus. 
It is the second, second furthest planet from the sun and therefore also has to travel a pretty long time to go once around our home star, the sun. It takes Uranus roughly 84 years to orbit once around. Uranus is a blue planet, not because of water, but because of gases that make it appear blue. Uranus orbits on its side, which means that its seasons are completely different to ours. Summer and winter each take 21 years at the North and South Poles. Neptune is closely related to Uranus. The atmosphere is composed of almost the same gases, just like Uranus. Neptune also appears blue. Neptune inherits its name from the Roman god of the sea as reference to its deep blue color. It is quite beautiful, isn't it? Neptune is the furthest planet from the sun and it takes 165 years for Neptune to go once around the sun. No space probes have ever visited Neptune or its partner Uranus, but a flyby was made by the space probe Voyager 2 in 1989. So we're getting close to the end and here we have a beautiful picture taken by NASA of our solar system. This reflects our stars, our planets, and from the planet, from the Earth, we're able to visibly see about 7,000 stars, though there are billions more. The stars have been named after animals or Greek gods. Why? Well, when the Greeks started looking and doing astronomy, they started naming these stars um, after animals that they thought appeared looked the same or gods in favor or to um, honor the gods, the Greek gods. Many stars that were once visible no longer exist. But because it takes so long to reach Earth, they are still visible longer or far longer after they have expired. The turbulence of Earth's atmosphere is the reason why the stars appear to twinkle. The moon's surface is covered in craters from meteorites crashing into its surface. Because the moon is so small, about one-sixth the size of the Earth, it is unable to hold its atmospheric pull to protect it from passing meteors. It also has very little gravitational pull. The moon is the only place where man has walked, except for Earth. So I included an extra slide for you to take a look at. You have Earth on the left hand side, ginormous in its size comparative to the moon. And on the right hand side, you actually get to see a real picture of a man walking on the moon. And in the distance, that is our planet, planet Earth. You can also see those huge craters from the meteorites we, uh, we just discussed and how they crashed into the moon. There have been some studies that show that the moon is actually losing its uh, size. It is shrinking probably from all of that um, deposits of meteors crashing and, and, and taking away parts of the moon. So here we have the sun. Two different pictures. 
The sun has been shining for 4.6 billion years. Its temperature is 15 million degrees Celsius, hotter than anything found on Earth. And it is able to produce electricity by the generation of the sun's heat. This is known as solar energy. The sun is made up of 90% of hydrogen. We take electricity from the rays of the sun with solar panels. We're able to reflect and retain that heat from the sun and store it and use it for electricity as we see fit. So on the right hand side, we have a very close picture of sunspots. The sunspots are several thousand degrees hotter than the rest of the sun and they burn for months on end. So this is our last slide of our solar system and it has all of our beautiful planets surrounding our star, our sun. The sun is the largest and you have the Earth and you have Neptune and all of the other stars that we, or planets that we just spoke about. So uh, we're gonna go into how composers were inspired by these planets, inspired by the moon, inspired by the sun to write songs. So we're gonna follow up with that shortly. All right, so we're going to um, dabble just a little bit in conversation about our composers and how they were inspired to write about the planets, the sun, the moon, stars. Um, most composers wrote predominantly about the moon. Why? Well, if you look a lot at our social um, constructs and confines of the past 300 years, um, a lot is said about a person based upon their stature and wealth, especially three, four hundred years ago when music was being written, uh, just starting to get written uh, about, right? So um, songs like Moonlight Sonata and Claire de Lune, right? There's this whole kind of sense of beauty, yet secrecy and this guise of being shrouded in darkness, right? but in a beautiful way, right? Um, why is that? Well, there's, if you look at a lot of the poetry written about um, the moon, it always has um, an ethereal um, atmosphere of two lovers meeting because they have no other way to do that. Um, that could be because of um, financial um, constraints, maybe that one family was more well off than, than the other and they weren't able to marry. You see a lot of that, those types of um, um, tragical kind of love stories that never could be because of those confines. Um, it also could just be based upon stature as well. Um, it also could be, you know, um, the idea of the moon is shrouding people in secrecy, you know, um, um, conspiracy <laughs> theories and so forth. So the moon is able to um, purvey a lot of different subjects, but a lot of them being love. And that is one of the things that people aspire to most is that, that connection between two people. So um, that's probably one of the reasons why they wrote most of their music when, when combining you know space it's about the moon that's not to say that the stars aren't um popular one of the most popular songs for children is twinkle twinkle little star right um another very you are my sunshine has to do with the sun right which we will actually be doing uh, a little bit later on um, but if you also pay attention to the little um clip on the planets that we spoke about, you will notice that uh, all the songs that were played while we were talking about the planets all had to do with the moon, the sun, or the stars. Most of the songs that are even of current um, day and age are not written about the planets. 
Um, the majority that you heard was Fly Me to the Moon, um, Dancing in the Moonlight, um, Sky Full of Stars by Coldplay, Here Comes the Sun from the Beatles, um, Space Song, um, Island in the Sun, Harvest Moon from Neil Young, um, Love Song to the Earth by Paul McCartney, uh, Lady Gaga. Now this one actually was a planet song and, and that, that was Venus that was written in 2013. That is actually about the planet Venus. Um, and there, when you go to the clip of Mars, um, that song is actually about Mars, Viva Life on Mars. So there are some songs that were written about planets, but they're few and far between. Most of them have to do with the sun, moon, and stars. So on that note, we are actually going to take, if you have bells at home, you can use bells, or you can also use some kitchen tools like a pot and a wooden spoon, um, two wooden spoons together, that's perfectly fine. And we're gonna sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and we're going to use our bells. So before we do that, we're just gonna go over our musical notes. Remember that this is our whole note. It's worth four beats, right? Our half note, like a pirate looking glass, two beats. Our quarter note, like a ninja, hiya! It's worth one beat. And our eighth notes, right? T, 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 T. So let's begin with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And we're gonna start with whole notes. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. Half note. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Quarter note. Twinkle, twinkle, of any kind or it could be two sticks from outside okay and we're going to sing along to you are my sunshine okay all right so the same idea we're going to start with a whole note ready one, two, three, four. One, two, three. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Half note. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Quarter no. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Take my sunshine away. Ain't no! You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I 
job. Okay, so that concludes our um, songs for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, as well as You Are My Sunshine. Um, I would like you to go ahead and look at your links. Um, I have included um, some fun little things from Claire de Lune and um, with Walt Disney showing um, a story based upon what he or whoever the writer was felt when they were um, listening to the music. So for them, they saw a beautiful swan and, and, and how it was alone. Or you can just watch the picture yourself and you might not really think that the swan was alone. Maybe you thought that maybe he just wanted to be alone or he was searching for someone or, but it doesn't come with, um, with words. So you have to use the music to find the emotion. There's pictures there to help you. Okay. So I want you to watch that first. Then I want you to go to the Moonlight Sonata and I want you to close your eyes Okay, and I want you to think about what you feel when you're listening to the Moonlight Sonata. Do you feel sad? Do you feel upset? Do you feel angry, maybe? Well, I don't think that probably will happen, but who knows, you know? Um, do you feel happy? You might, who knows? And from there, I want you to think about a story, okay? It could be about anything. It could be about a butterfly. It could be about a leprechaun. It could be about planets. It could be about a dog. It could be about your brother or your sister. It could be about anything. It could be about making up something. So I want you to come up with a story, okay? And I want you to draw that, all right? I want you to draw a picture of it. And then I want you to tell mom and dad what you got from listening to that piece of music, how you put it in your page, and the story you came up with, okay? Um, from there, um, I also have some, um, some interesting, just a little, a clip about an opera, um, that was actually based upon, um, space. Um, so that's included too. It's really, really short. It's not long. Um, just little, um, like a trailer of sorts. And I have included for you to read, um, about the, the opera. So that concludes our lesson for this week, and I look forward to next week and our subject. Okay, have a wonderful weekend, because uh, we are getting close to it, and I hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather, and I hope we're all able to get outside a little bit more uh, as the summer approaches. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye.